Eyewitness News continues with Brian Sussman and the weather. Light rain moved into the Bay Area about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Still light tonight where it is falling with gusty winds reported as well. You'd expect me to say this right now. This is a very complex weather system. You can see all these clouds, subtropical clouds moving into California. And then back up this way, these speckled clouds, this is some very, very cold air. Once the cold meets up with the wet, that's when we'll see the heavy rain. And unlike past storms, the heaviest precipitation will primarily be San Francisco southward, especially in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and even further south into the Big Sur range. It has been cold up north with that air mass. Let me show you some pictures from Portland earlier today. Nightmare commute. Many folks late for work today. The guy you're about to see here wins the Don't Try This at Home Kids Award. Check this out. Pull over before you put on those tire chains. My goodness. It has been a mess up that way. Let's talk about it locally. You can see very light rain showing up on radar tonight. So light, in fact, some of this is actually evaporating before it hits the ground. Now, in the high Sierra, for tomorrow, there is a winter storm warning in effect. We'll talk about that in a moment. In the meantime, temperatures are rising throughout the area because the air mass moving in from the south is a warm one. So we're seeing San Francisco at 46, Fairfield 39. Again, those temperatures will warm as we get closer towards dawn. Winter storm warning in the high Sierra, Tahoe southward. In terms of snowfall amounts, we can expect one to two feet around the Tahoe Basin tomorrow, tomorrow night especially. Two to three feet further south around Yosemite. Three to five inches of rain anticipated in the coastal mountains around Los Angeles. Two to four inches of rain for the coastal mountains around Big Sur. And then one to two inches of precipitation for the Bay Area. The forecast for tomorrow, rain heavier as you get further south. Gusty winds at times from the south, 15 to 35 miles per hour. Temperatures in the 50s tomorrow. A few more showers on Thursday. A break Friday and then more just in time for that Niner game. Saturday, uh -oh. Sunday, Monday. Snow heavy at times in the Sierra. Snow level high tomorrow, then dropping down tomorrow night. shasta Siskiyou range will escape with very, very light precipitation. Wayne, don't forget that raincoat in the booth on Saturday. <laughs> That's the latest for right now. Imagine so cold in Portland, it froze that guy's brain. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Right. Well, a fight is in the works, and it involves the San Francisco Giants. It is a political battle over several million dollars. Hank Plant has our report. Stop the Giants Leeds giveaway. Sign here to put it on the ballot. There's no rest for the angry, here, and in this case, it's San Francisco community giveaway. activists angry over what they're calling the Giants giveaway Stop on the their Giants new lease giveaway. at Candlestick Park. The ordinance is passed for second reading, and the resolutions are adopted. It was last month that the Board of Supervisors handed the team's new owners a lease that gives the team candlestick for just one dollar a year. The millionaires who bought the Giants don't need the money, as, um, evidenced by the fact that they paid $43 million for one player. Now, if they can afford that, they can afford to pay their rent. But not everyone wants this referendum, both on the street and in the newspapers. In fact, in a rare show of agreement, both city newspapers have just editorialized against the vote. The Chronicle going so far as to tell people not to sign the petitions. One of the points we made in the editorial was that uh, uh, th this, uh, the team is already losing money, so that uh, it, it's not a matter of millionaires lining their pockets. It's uh, a matter of... Uh, getting jobs and a certain spirit back to San Francisco. He says they're not trying to cut off free speech by suggesting people don't sign the petitions. And as for the community organizers, they say they don't read the editorials anyway. In order to make the November ballot, the people gathering signatures on these petitions have to get 14,000 more in the next two weeks. That's about 1,000 a day. In the world of politics, it would be a triple play. But they say they can pull it off. At Candlestick, Hank Plant, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Just ahead, what's happening at some Bay Area parties that has lots of people worried. And she's Phil Donahue's wife, and boy, do the tabloids love to write about Marlo Thomas. Mary Jo's boyfriend lost his job. Aww. But she's going to take care of him. Oh, so you two are shacking up. We are not shacking up. How long can he stay? Uh, what year is it now? Learn to cook, keeps the house straight, spends time with kids, he's even forming a bridge club. But now he's pushing it. Can I borrow a 20? 
You've just got to move out. On the next Designing Women. Designing Women, Wednesday at 3 on Channel 5. New Philly Free instead. You're watching Dave McElhatton, Kate Kelly, Wayne Walker, and Brian Sussman. An elementary school principal from San Jose pleaded not guilty today to charges that he sold drugs in his school's parking lot. Ricardo Trevino was arrested last month for allegedly selling methamphetamines to a police informant at Mayfair Elementary School. According to court records, Trevino admitted he sold the drugs to pay off a gambling debt. If convicted, he could face four years in state prison. A throwback from the 60s is on the rise in San Francisco, psychedelic drugs. It is all part of the all-night dance party scene, and it's catching on across the country. Bernard Goldberg has more. They don't call San Francisco Halloween by the sea for nothing. Da, 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 da. You think you're looking at a dance, but the people dancing say you're looking at a movement. And if they're right, that might be scarier than you think. It's called a rave. And it's not just big in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, and New York. Raves, they tell us, are coming to a town near you, ready or not. They're coming together of anywhere from 500 to 1,000 people dancing all night long. Um, some sober, some not, many not. In fact, psychedelic drugs are making a comeback with this new generation. A very big comeback. These are your children and mine. They are involved in a new scene, which is a hell of a lot of fun. 25 years ago, Alex Stahlcup was a San Francisco hippie. Today, he's a psychiatrist who treats rave casualties. The kids say uh, drugs at the rave parties, no problem. Come on. I, I feel good. I use ecstasy. I feel good. LSD. These are extraordinarily powerful chemicals. And any time that you are playing with your own neurochemistry, you're playing with fire. Why shouldn't people have a good time and if they find it through drugs? And what's wrong with that? Well, you, you know, just between us, drugs are against the law. This is right, right. A generation ago, the poet said, the times, they are changing. He was right. In some places, the 90s are changing right into the 60s. And tomorrow night, 48 Hours is focusing on the resurgence of LSD in the Bay Area and around the nation. That program will air here on Channel 5 at 9 o'clock. And on Eyewitness News at 10, we're going to look at another drug that is on the rise in the Bay Area, ecstasy. One more case reminiscent of that popular Home Alone movie tonight. Daisy Aldeseed and her two young daughters, aged two and four, were traveling north out of Los Angeles by Greyhound bus Sunday night. Daisy got off at a rest stop to make a phone call, leaving the kids on the bus because it was cold. But when she turned around, the bus and her kids were gone. Daisy made a frantic call to the highway patrol. The officers flagged down the bus, rescued the girls, who were a bit bewildered, but otherwise in great shape. And still to come, what are the odds that David Letterman will get Jay Leno's job? And he got stuck in a chimney of all places. Now see why he's stuck in the slammer. You have questions. Vibe has answers. When will it rain? What's it like outside? Will I need a jacket? When will the fog burn off? Is this going to be another drought year? Is the hole in the ozone getting worse? Why don't we get hurricanes? Is this the greenhouse effect? What's a microclimate? Which way is the wind blowing? How's it going to be this weekend? You have questions. Five has answers. Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 5, 6, and 10. Hi, I'm Jan Yanahiro with KPIX TV. Help celebrate the third anniversary of the Pier 39 Sea Lions. Pier 39 and the Marine Mammal Center produced for kids an activity book about sea lions and their environment. In San Diego, they're still talking tonight about the suspected burglar who collared himself. Let's take a look. The man is in the chimney. His name is Frank Morales. Police say he was trying to lower himself into the house to burglarize it, but got stuck instead. And the family woke up when they heard him screaming. I ran to the front door to see what was going on. My husband right behind me. And then I realized the voice was not coming from the front door. The voice was coming from my living room. And I said, where are you at? And this voice says, I'm in the fireplace. 
<laughs> well, police had to call in the fire department to help get him out, and then he went from a 1 by 2 chimney to an 8 by 10 <laughs> jail cell. Jay Leno's Tonight Show band leader says police in New Orleans gave him a hard time over the weekend. Branford Marcella says police stopped him for speeding, handcuffed him, and were rough with him in his hometown. The musician says the police told him that he had a, an attitude and decided to arrest him. Once police recognized who Marcellus was, he says they let him go. New Orleans police say they have no record of that incident. Odds in Las Vegas, by the way, are 6 to 5. David Letterman will replace Leno on The Tonight Show. They are 7 to 5. Letterman will go to CBS, where the late-night host would have his own show right here on Channel 5.